Well, welcome to Wonderful Women podcast with Susan Stewart and this week featuring the amazing, wonderful woman who is Stephanie Ray. I hope everyone's listening and that you share this far and wide and do please press subscribe. So let me tell you a little bit about Stephanie. Stephanie is the most incredible artist. She's sitting in front of her art there. And I just absolutely love that, Stephanie. So Stephanie is an artist. She's a therapist. She's an art therapist. And also, uh, I know, Stephanie, that you help with people in, in great trauma as well. You have got so many skills. It's phenomenal. And I have got to say, I love this woman. She is incredible. And um, Stephanie also has a beautiful membership called the Art Flow Rut Lounge. I am part of that. Um, and I will put all the details of how you can get in touch with Stephanie in um, the description. But we are here with this season's question, which I am loving. And the question is, can you share a time or an event or a challenge that impacted the trajectory and changed the trajectory of your life? And I, I love it because not one single woman that I've posed this question to has come back and said, oh, I can't think of anything. That <laughs> oh, there's quite a few. Yeah. So, <laughs> Stephanie, is there anything else that you would like to say to introduce yourself or will we go straight into the question? It's up to you, my lovely. Well, I just want to thank you for that lovely introduction and thank you for being here and for being part of my Art Flow Lounge and just um, all the wonderfulness that we have experienced together and many laughs and I'm just grateful for you. So Many laughs. I'm, oh, well, I am so grateful for you. Before we came on, we were having a great laugh and I said, well, yeah. that's great. We're going to come on laughing. Yes, so, yes. Oh, the question. So, a question. A question. I am ready. Great. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, yeah. there's so many, so many that I could talk about, right? Because I definitely have had a very full life of challenges uh, incidents that change the trajectory and many things. But I think that there is the one that stands out most in my, you know, life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it happened when I was about 24 years old okay. and I was a waitress and I was at work and I drove home from work to find my apartment on fire. Oh. Yes. So like literally flames coming out the window it was like two o'clock in the morning. I parked my truck and ran up. There was already fire trucks starting to pull up and they were already there. I can't remember exactly, but I think they were there because I remember running towards. So I ran around the building to the front of the building. Not what was I going to do, but anyway, you know, that fight, flight or freeze thing, I run towards danger yeah. in this instance. And I just remember like all the windows were blowing out and there was just smoke billowing and water coming through and it was just wild and I just remember standing there and having this feeling in my body that it just was like being ripped open from like uh you know my pelvis area all the way up through my heart and I just remember it mainly here maybe up to my throat and just feeling like all these thoughts of, oh my God, you know, this is my fault because it wasn't just affecting me. You know, I lived in an apartment, so there was people on both sides and above and underneath. And, yeah. so, you know, the downstairs people were getting water damage and the ones next door were getting smoke damage and, the, well, you know, all the things. Right. Yeah, and of course, you know, I remember thinking all this, like, oh my gosh, worrying about the other people and worrying that, what did I do? And I was like, did I leave a curling iron on, you know, immediately went to, how did I do this? Right. Yeah. Um, so the interesting thing behind this change is that I don't know the time frame from when the fire actually happened, uh, to this dream I had. So I had like a prophetic dream about this incident wow. and in the dream, the fire started in my bed and in the actual fire. And I was in my bed 
Um, I got out in the dream. Yes. You can see why this is so memorable, right? Yeah. Even though this is like 25 years ago. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so the fire started in that area. So my room, my bedroom was completely incinerated. I mean, like ashes. The only thing that was left was like some coils, you know, from the mattresses when they used to have coils. I don't yeah. even know. I don't think they have those anymore. I don't think <laughs> but, they do. I no. Don't. And I had like but a I lot of remember. milk. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I had like a lot of milk crates, you know, stacked up to this was like the early nineties. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Around there. Um, and so, you know, I just ended up having the clothes on my back, you know, what wasn't completely incinerated was completely destroyed from melting. It was just a total trip. Like I still have the pictures yeah, and like just the damage that fired us. So that night, you know, I think like a red cross van showed up and they like gave me a voucher to go to a hotel. And I literally was wearing my waitressing uniform and I worked at the time at a Cajun restaurant. So, um, they had these shirts that were like super kind of tacky yeah. and, uh, you know, they had like a shrimp on it or uh, an oyster and it was like, you know, not, yeah. not a nice thing. It just isn't yeah. a nice, <laughs> it's not something you want to wear every day. Okay. Definitely not. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, I have the clothes on my back and I'm in this hotel and I'm just like, and that is something that changed the trajectory of my life because it kind of started my healing process. I also kind of call it like a spiritual emergency, right? Yeah. Um, because I was having, I mean, I've always been, you know, having premonitions kind of and mm-hmm. having prophetic dreams, um, but mainly only ones that weren't that positive. So, but n- I now know that's because I wasn't allowing that gift in because you know, the bad ones can break through. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm grateful that that warning was there, even though I don't know what that means, but what I do know is that I could not stop crying. And I had always kind of been like hard, like when I got older, you know, between 17 and 20 something super hard, didn't want to have emotions was kind of like this all the time. All I did was work. I had no hobbies. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything except for party and work in a restaurant. That was my life. Yeah. And so when this happened, I could not stop crying and I like lost my job. I lost my boyfriend. I lost everything I owned. This is all like in a week or two. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know it was a lot. Yeah. But I, um, I mean, it was horrible, but what happened was, so the apartment complex would not let me out of my lease. And so they moved me into a small apartment. I remember just sitting in that apartment with like literally nothing. And I'm thinking, just crying, you know, and, you know, I, I, my mom was like, you know, you can come home. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Cause I was super stubborn. You know, I was like, no, I'm on my journey, not coming home. Um, but I didn't have any community. Um, you know, so I didn't like have this big rally behind me. And back then there wasn't like the internet in that way where you could do like a GoFundMe or whatever. Yeah. So anyway, I started another waitressing job. I started a couple of waitressing jobs in between the one I lost and the one I ended up at because I couldn't even barely hold a job. Yeah. So I would like show up to work if I could and I would just be crying and they didn't fire me for that, but like, I just wouldn't go back. I, I was just really messed up. So anyway, I start working at this restaurant and there's a lady there and her name is Nancy and she's in recovery and she's like 30 years older than me. And she's like, you know, have you ever thought about going to therapy? And I was like, yeah, I don't really know what that is. And, uh, you know, I kind of didn't. Um, so, or what it, what it, that really meant, or maybe, you know, maybe I knew of it, but just didn't click for me that that was an option. And so, I was like, no, she's the way I really think you need to like, (laughs) you think. And so she sent me. Yeah. So she sent me to her therapist and um, her name was Libby Mm -hmm. and she was like a grandma age, which, you know, was great because my, I have a childhood memory of a lady up the street, Mrs. Gibson. And she was always the one that I went to her house and she gave me cookies. And so there was something that like connected me to this lady. Right yeah you want me to keep going (laughs) i do i do i'm enthralled okay so i start seeing libby 
Yeah. And Libby just kind of starts helping me realize that I am, um, I don't, I want to say valuable, but I wasn't even at that point to be able to grasp that concept yet. Yeah. Just that I was human and it was okay to have feelings. Yeah. That was even the first step. Right. Yeah. And kind of helping me just kind of get a little bit stable on my feet. And then during that time, uh, she just, I don't even know how, but just going to therapy really helped me start realizing, you know, that I am a valuable person, even though that would take years to integrate. It was the beginning yeah. of that. It was the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And so from that, I started like gaining some more self-esteem and some more self-worth and, you know, like actually like looking in the mirror and like thinking I'm not, I'm pretty. Like I remember looking in the mirror one day and like almost not even recognizing myself. It was out at, at somewhere in public. And I like looked in the mirror and I, I, I thought to myself, like, who is that? And then I realized it was me. So it was like a lot, right? Like yeah. a lot. Absolutely. So, yeah. so what, ha- what happened from this was I ended up meeting someone and uh, he lived on the Upper East Coast of the United States. And I decided to move up there. Why? That's because I fell in love. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I continued to go to therapy. I kind of had more of a breakdown there, but I got in pretty intensive therapy. Yeah. And during that therapy, I went to a dance therapist and this dance therapist started having me make marks on paper wow. so that I could begin to uh, identify my emotions. Yeah. And so she was she'd just say, well, you know, when you feel this sensation, pick a color and mark the paper. Mm-hmm. And so I'd have all these sets of papers. Yeah. And so I started building like a visual vocabulary for my own emotional life. That's beautiful. Yeah. And so ha- as I continued seeing her, I also started to be around all these people that were going to like Harvard and MIT. And, you know, to me, they were like fancy and super intelligent. I had never been around that. Yeah. And I'm from Texas. Just, I don't know if I said that I'm from Texas. So, you know, it's a whole thing being from Texas. (laughs) And um, so I started realizing that I wasn't dumb. You're not always believed that I was dumb and that, you know, I think there was like some uh, undiagnosed things in there, you know, that were, yeah. learning made me kind of learning challenge and so anyway I mean I look back on it now and I kind of know I wasn't because in high school I would just put my books in my trunk and then never look at them and, yeah. I mean I didn't make A's and B's but I made C's and I still graduated and like I did nothing really except go to the school you know so you're a looking genius back, then. yeah you're a genius Stephanie. no 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 <laughs> but I started realizing oh maybe I should go to school you know yeah And so I started going to community college and I actually ended up going to the community college where good will hunting was filmed with Robin Williams, which I love love that. So I was there. That's the college I went to. I used to walk over the Charles bridge to school and I lived in East Cambridge. Yeah. So it was the first time in my life, you know, I was around a very diverse cultural environment. I had never had that. I was living like uh, with the Portuguese community in the East part of Cambridge. Mm-hmm. I um, was selling Mary Kay. I was going to college and I was going to this therapist. So anyway, w- once I started going to the community college, uh, I got introduced to this professor, Mr. Johnson, and he just encouraged me creatively. Again, my therapist encouraged me creatively. I started making art. Like I started painting furniture and I started mainly things like that, little like painting flower pots, you know, Yeah crafty stuff, I guess, but I got so much positive feedback and things. I just started making art and eventually that led me to go to Naropa university and get my bachelor's in visual arts. Amazing. So amazing. Yeah. That was a pretty big incident that caused this ripple effect. Yeah. That led me to become an artist and then also led me to understand the healing powers of art and expression of all the art. So it wasn't just like the art part, but the ability to express, right? 
absolutely and you're so and, and that's what you do but that got you through your trauma as well so of course you're doing it from a place of absolute knowing because that's where it came from in the first place that's oh I love that what that story Stephanie my goodness out of the flames of a fire you know and and you know metaphorically speaking sometimes mm-hmm. everything does have to just burn down everything to completely start again yeah for sure and it's so interesting over the years you know recently i'm doing the mastermind and i was um faced with a woman who just went through what i went through and i observed her and she was very surprised because she had such a huge community like the next day she had everything she needed to run a house and so i was just like that's so beautiful you know and i would have that now Because that's another thing I gained out of that. Um, And I'm working on this, you know, like the lone wolfing thing. Oh, I know. I'm very, I'm very good at that. And so I'm really, this year has really been about stop that because that's not how it works. No, absolutely not. And, and, you know, I am quite a lone wolf myself. I live on my own. I'm very, very choosy about socializing. For anyone I say no to, I'm sorry, I love you. But I'm just, and I think even more so since uh, um, COVID, you know, and I used to socialize through my business and that would be that when I had a boutique or when I worked for Sky TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, we, and that word community is, I'm hearing it God knows how many times a day now. And, and that is what is important in, in our lives, I think. Com- community, would you say so now? We, we need it. Yeah, I mean, we actually, you know, talk about it in the, you know, healing arts community that, mm-hmm. you know, we really believe that you can't even heal outside of community. No, And so that's even changing, starting to t- change the trajectory of my work. So even COVID, you know, these big things that happen, right? Mm. If you allow them to, can uh, propel you into growth that changes Absolutely. for me, you know, changes me and will change you if you allow it to, and yeah. then allow you to help others. Yeah. And even if your path isn't helping others, just you being in the world can yeah. be either help or a hindrance or a nothing, you know? Yeah. And and I I think that's community, right? Like we're all here to bring whatever it is we bring to the table. But Mm. yeah, you know, if you look at culturally for thousands of years, people have healed through ceremony and through Mm. collaborative expression and collaborative movement. And, you know, look at our indigenous tribes that have, you know, been trying to tell us and teach us and has Uh our Western culture, you know, is completely destroyed try to destroy those institutions yes. whether, you know intentionally and 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 not intentionally both ways yeah. yeah so you know I think that's been something really on my heart and mm-hmm. that I've been working on this year is I don't want to lone wolf anymore and it is hard for me you know yeah. because of trust yeah but I'm getting past that too because no. it's too important it's too important oh. and and we will help more and I'll help more people. Yeah, you okay. will. You, you absolutely. Yeah. You absolutely will. And I mean, when when I decided to start this podcast, I don't know if you watched the introduction mm-hmm. podcast. It, it was um, triggered by, well, first of all, about 15 years ago, being in a kitchen uh, at a meditation event and just feeling incredible love for all the women that were there and um, st- stating right there and then I just blurting it out because I do that sort of thing that I was going to start a wonderful women movement um, but of course there wasn't what we you know there, was, there wasn't this then there, there yeah. wasn't podcasts there wasn't social media I think there was flyers we, there were yeah, fires. There were fires. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With no community. If that fire had happened, you know, uh, uh, now, no matter what, a community yeah. would be built around you. You know, yeah. even if you were that 24 year old person, you would, yes. someone would have Somebody started. would have helped me. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, you know what I found is that in my experience, one of the only ways I really saw 
to be a, be in a community was church or like sports, yeah, you know, or some kind of hobby that was a group. And I just never really fit into those, you know? So yeah. that was my experience of how communities are built. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then also growing up, you know, that I don't remember ever feeling like that was something that was, uh, deemed as important or was around me. Yeah. You know, I was raised very much like, you know, you work and you work mm -hmm. and, you know, you, I guess you have some fun, but mainly you work. Yes. So we have a very work oriented family. And so everything yeah. I had ever done, I guess work was kind of my community, but when that fire happened, they were like, the minute I couldn't really keep it together. Well, yeah. You're yeah. replaced. You're yeah. replaced. And that, that happens as well everywhere. I think that's, you know, a, a, why people are having a huge pro problem employing people nowadays. Oh, yeah. Wanna... My, yeah. Uh, uh, because they they have been viewed as replaceable. Maybe they didn't keep them on furlough or things like that. And, yeah. you know, people would rather not work than go and work for somewhere that they, they're not appreciated. Yes. But going back to the reason for the podcast, so there was a wonderful woman um, thing that I went ahead and everyone said it was a great idea, but I didn't do anything about it. But then before Christmas last year, Amy and I, Amy was here, my daughter, and we were watching a lecture by Jean Houston, Dr. Jean Houston, um, at the Altered States Conference. I mean, she is phenomenal, that woman. I don't know if you're aware of her. But mm -hmm. she's in her 80s. Um, I mean, she, she worked with Einstein, you know, in, in, wow. in her youth. And, and um, But the lecture was incredible. And she was uh, talking about it being the time now of the heroine. Of the, it's women's yeah. time. We have to be the heroines of our time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying that the men, the heroes, mm -hmm. are no longer heroes. But the masculinity of of the world just isn't working anymore, mm -hmm. and and it's the the heroines and the females that have got to take to the fore. So that that is the reason I thought, right, wonderful women podcast. It just came to me. Um, how do you feel about that? Do you think it's our responsibility now? Do you think it's our time now? To yeah. I think it is our time. I mean, I think that we, many people, many women have taken responsibility in different ways, but I think now it's more political yeah. um, where we have to make the change. Um, of course, in the United States, we had someone try to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Patriarchal structure here is strong and, oh. but women are stronger. And I think that's kind of what my process has been in this last year, you know, since January or whatever, mm. like just feeling like something is really off for me. And I don't feel like myself and I'm so in my head that yeah. it's just, I'm exhausted. Like, and I mean, you know, I'm a yoga teacher and I use yoga and I do embodied practices and movement and music, but there was just still something that wasn't connecting. I mean, I do all the things, right. Yeah. And I think that's something that can be frustrating for people because they're like, I'm doing all the things and I'm not feeling different. Right. Yeah. I'm or I'm not feeling, this is not enough self-care. Yeah. And so what I found for me is that it is that I was not in touch with uh, the other side of me. I mean, I, feminine, masculine. Yes. I, I wish I need other words for that because that's not the only way. Right. Yeah. But just that, that softer side, that more intuitive side, because I'm incredibly intuitive and I'm an incredibly uh, empathic person and um, all the things, but I had kind of I guess I kind of had to compartmentalize yeah. to kind of do the amount of clients I was holding space for during yeah. the pandemic and just the, the situation that I chose to be in during that time. Yeah. Um, so I think it was just like a coping mechanism that I just kind of shut the doors on all of that. Yeah. Uh, or my feminine, I'm just going to say feminine because I don't have yeah. the word yet, but I know. So I've been kind of unearthing that and, I feel so much better. Like I've been having way less anxiety, um, way more calm. So to go to your question, yes, I think that it is the time for that because while I'm incredibly strong and can hold so much pain and can hold so much stuff and can help transform that, I also have this very soft, kind, compassionate side mm -hmm. that I now uh, have stronger boundaries around. Good. I think part of why I shut it down was because I didn't know how to 
have the boundaries. Yeah. And it would just be like, I would just give, 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 give. And yeah. that's not effective, right? Uh, so I think there's a lot going on for me. Um, the story, yeah, the story continues, you know, I think when we are women that allow something to change the trajectory of our life, it continues to happen over and over and over. And sometimes even moment by moment. Definitely. If we're really in our truth and really paying attention and really paying attention to our body and all those things, you know? Absolutely. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that women are going to have to be the ones to bring peace to this world, as much peace as there ever will be. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I totally agree. And it's um, I hear you with the... So, well, we'll just have to right now call it masculine feminine. We'll just call it that because... That's what we've been programmed to do, I suppose. Um, and most of my life, I have worked from a masculine Me too, yeah. energy, absolutely. Um, because I had to bring my family up. I worked in a male-orientated world. I'd, I always knew I could do everything, but I had to stay, you know, in, in that masculine energy. And I have, I, I too have spent so much time over the past couple of years, really blending allowing the feminine in allowing the yeah there's a meditation yeah definitely and there's a meditation i do that takes this the female and she comes over and she actually holds the the male and and tells them it's all right or you know well i tell it you know it doesn't have to be that it has to be whatever comes in to you to your mind and then the masculine holds the feminine and then you can put them together and take them down. Oh, it, it's just beautiful. And I, and I do it for 28 days and then I feel amazing. Then I go away and feel pretty well balanced. And then I lose the plot again and just go, <laughs> you know. So it, it's a work in progress, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's a, allowing ourselves that time, allowing ourselves time to really develop and care for the feminine. Yeah. And yeah. And I think, you know, obviously we're speaking a well, I'm going to claim it, but you know, we're kind of, we have the privilege to do this, right? Yeah. We have the privilege to even think about this. I know. And so that becomes even more important, like for me, like the, uh, back to the identity of community, right. And yeah. community many times has been built by the more feminine energies yeah. right like women cooking together women coming together during their cycles yeah. or you know the crones or whatever it is right yeah. um prayer circles all the things yeah. so that for me like coming being able to balance my masculine and feminine mm -hmm. really wanting to impact a greater amount of people and build a stronger more involved community yeah. um you know i built a community and then i was like i don't even know how to do this. <laughs> like, I know what I do. Right. Yeah. And I love the people and they love me and we do the things, but I have a vision for it, you know? Yeah. And it is something that is accessible to more people. Yeah. You know, so like as a therapist, a lot of times people can't afford therapy, yeah. even on, even on a sliding scale. I mean, you know, it's expensive. Okay. Um, and so I tried to create something that had therapeutic value and empowered people with tools um and i did that in the art flow lounge and so i've kind of been sitting on the art flow lounge a little bit because i wasn't quite sure you know like what wait what where is this going what do i want this to be so i'm excited that i've had these new revelations right yeah that they are changing the trajectory again and that i know that my art needs to be first yes. because that is my messenger that's my journal that's my visual story yeah that i've been creating for 25 years and it is what leads me to being able to create the community to be exactly. in touch with my feminine right exactly. that's where the balance got lost it is i became a therapist i became an art therapist and then i was more focused on my work and creating containers for my clients while i still make process art it's not the same as what this is to me yeah. That, yeah. No, it's not. And I've, I've seen um, some more of your art. Your art is incredible. I love it. It's, it actually touches, it touches my soul. And you yeah. touch my soul. Oh, um, 
and and yes, you know that the art does come first, and the art will propel mm -hmm. the art flow lounge. The art flow lounge is such a special place, and I am so happy to be in there as a founding member. I tap into it when I need to. I'm, I'm going on a call um, that you've got a guest expert coming into, which is going to be really lovely and exciting and beautiful um, after we record uh, this uh, podcast. And the Artful Lounge will grow. Everyone, need, will. everyone needs a Stephanie. You, even <laughs> listening to your voice, Stephanie, makes me go, ah. Honestly, all I would need to do is actually just put on a little um, audio of your voice sometimes. But your your um, help and ideas as far as using art as my therapy, because we all need therapy, is yeah. just beautiful. And I do. Thank I've you. got, yeah. I love having you there. And I'm so glad that we have connected and become close. And Susan has helped me with so many things with the fasting and business things and oh. a lot of things. And she's been so patient. You know, I just want you to know that if you are looking to uh, walk alongside someone, you know, I want to say work with someone, but Susan really walks alongside you. Oh. And she has been able to like witness this path for me. Like she, I, I can sense that she knows I'm in this transition, even though it's not a transition of the specific work I do. It's like an internal transition. Absolutely. And so she's been able to like hold space for that and not try to, you know, make me feel bad for not doing whatever the thing is we're supposed to be doing or never. It's happening anyway. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. happening in a different way for me. Exactly. It is um, happening it's anyway. not happening in the 3D, right? It's happening in the 5D or something. Yeah. That's fine. That's great. It's happening for you. So, and, and that has to be honored. We are all individuals, we are all unique. Um, and I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So oh. Susan will be the person that gets me to Europe. So just so you know. Yeah, I will. I am. I definitely will. Yeah, I'm so excited about that. <laughs> and right. I, well, I can't wait for you to come to get to Scotland. To be honest. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, I'm showing sure. you all the way around. Yes. Well, Stephanie, my gorgeous woman, I have got to thank you, and it's been so lovely to talk to you. And there's so much to take away from this conversation. And thank you. I am going to ask you back. I don't know what the question for next season is yet. It okay. won't come to me, but I love you. will be there. Of course, always. All right. Thank you, my darling. Thank love you, you very much. Thank All you. right.